Dilip has over 30 years of corporate experience, of which the past 12 years have been as an entrepreneur. He is founder of Hyphen Training and Consulting Private Limited, with, which consults corporates on their leadership development and related needs. He is an independent director and also coaches and trains entrepreneurs and senior executives to perform their roles better. Sienilesh uh, Shivji Vikamsi is the past president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and independent director in several listed companies. He is a senior partner of Kimji Kunwarji and uh, LLP Chartered Accountants since 1985. He has served on various regulatory committees, including IRDA, SEBI, MCN, has been a speaker at various seminars. Welcome. And of course, Sanjay K. Jain, Managing Director of TT Limited, a fiber to fashion company that covers the entire spectrum of textile sector. A double gold medalist from IM Ahmedabad. Mr. Jain is on the committee of Nitra, Nitma, SIMA, CITI, Fiki Textiles Group and member of several committees from the textile and handloom industry and author of the book, Pinch of Assault in Recipe Called Life. He is also the past JBN chairman and mentor in Santa Clara University, USA. Over to you, Mr. Jack. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great to be here since morning and uh, a lot of the lovely discussions going on. I think we've all heard a lot about independent directors, the role they play and you know how they are there to mitigate the risk all of that good stuff. And we are kind of taking a step further uh, with our uh, fireside chat over here, which talks about risk culture and how independent directors can influence that culture. Because we see a lot of stuff happening, the IDs are there, the reason for IDs being there, all of that stuff has been done, but we still see issues. So is it that the tick box is being done and the real culture building is not being done? That's the topic we're going to talk about. And I'll straight away dive into it without really spending too much time because I know all of you are already thinking about what's the menu for lunch. Uh, but we'll have some time before we go there. So we'll get into the menu of this topic, which is all about risk culture and how do independent directors influence that risk culture. So Nileshji, I'll start with you in terms of, you know, what do you think can an independent director really do uh, to influence the culture? And with your vast experience, maybe you can share some uh, aspects on how you've seen things happen. Uh, thanks, uh, Dilip. Uh, I think on the risk side, I have seen the governance space evolve. I have been an independent director from 19, from 2005, so almost 18 years now. So, and I think tremendous work is happening on the risk side, the risk culture and the risk mm -hmm. management. But just to, you know, sort of comp make it in a nutshell, I think specially listed companies today I think the buzzword is compliance oriented growth. Uh, it was earlier buzzword of the MNCs, but across the listed space, I think without compliance, there can't be growth. If, if a company is growing without a compliance, you know, I would say a focus and different sectors, different, you know, uh, levels of compliance. If it is BFSI sector, which is very regulated, I think higher the compliance orientation. If it is some of the manufacturing sectors or say IT, maybe slightly lesser, but different types of compliance. If it is IT, it could be more on the, I would say, the uh, the international sort of compliance which are there, yeah. the data privacy, but co compliance has to be embedded in the growth. So the issue is we can't ignore growth, business have to grow, but how do we, so that's the role where the independent directors come in, where the fidgeting on, oh. sorry, am I audible? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. No. Uh, is it? So, I think that is one of the key things in the growth space. How do we have compliance? I think that is one. Of course, there are various risk, uh, various, you know, uh, risk culture is not only compliance, but compliance, I think today, if I can say so, is the uh, sine qua non of how we have to look at the risk. Yeah. And then, of course, there yeah. are other risks also, which I think. Sanjay will elaborate more. Yeah, so on that aspect, Sanjay, you know, he spoke about risk and business and, you know, compliance has become a key part of business. Now, business as a promoter thinks typically he thinks about his business. He doesn't think too much about risk. And that's where the independent directors come in. So in your experience, you know, when the boards are there and there has to be some business decisions taken, and if there is diversity, you know, there's some people are saying there's too much risk, some people are saying not less risk. How does that evolve? You know, how do people take that decision? How do they measure risk? How do they 
Really look at that. What are the various types of risks they look at? Maybe some insights into that, Sanjay ji. Uh, thank you, Dilip ji, and thank you, Mentor My Board, for inviting me over here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Bombay. I think so. Uh, if you're doing business, I think so. Risk is inherent, and if someone feels that he can do business and not have risk, I think so. It's better you stay and take up a job. Uh, entrepreneur uh, per se, I think so. If you want to give another meaning to it, it's risk taking ability. uh unfortunately or fortunately uh compliance has become such a big word that i think so in our board meetings more than business we discuss compliance have we met this compliant we have more certificates more papers you know where we have the full paper bound for the board meeting it has more of compliance related stuff yeah. rather than about strategy about growth etc etc i you know uh, one uh, gst commissioner told me once he's a good friend i said sir you have so many compliances so many rules you know uh, you know do we do business you have a way bill then you'll have an iran then you'll have uh, you know uh, invoice can't you have it one well sanjay ji for those 5 or 10% people the rest 90% people have to suffer because those 5 or 10% people will bound to keep skipping the rules and that's for the 90% who have Way no too. such intention we still keep have to keep them bound and probably also slow them down at some point of time because you're going to have more and more work more staff more overheads etc but uh, needless to say i think so independent director has a very important role to play number one they are independent they come from an outside our field mm -hmm. you know when i am into business i am whole day talking we are running the business there are so many issues there we forget uh, some fundamental things and an independent actor he is visiting us spending a day with us once a quarter and uh, of course he is looking after the compliances he is supposed to flag off but uh, if we can create a culture where we have an agenda point per se i would say not just make it you know a fleeting remark where we actually discuss of course we have a risk policy we have a risk management committee which you are meets who are to pass that policy but i think so if there is a separate agenda made where an independent flags of issues you know uh as you said risk is too much too less i think so it's all person based i uh, may find too much of risk as no risk and other person may find a small thing as a big risk you know uh you know we as they say uh, when you don't have big problems small problems become big problems in life so uh it's all relative i think so as a ceo or managing director of a company uh it's for me to finally filter out and decide you know uh, what do i perceive finally as a risk mm -hmm. while the id is flagging off and saying hello you know it's like a referee you know and blowing the whistle and saying please wait for a moment you're running too fast or you are you're playing a bit too rough but finally end of the day it's the player to take a call how how he wants his style to be we don't want an independent director to be curbing us we want the independent directors to reminding us flagging off and with their wealth of experience like people like nilesh bhai have been in so many boards so you observe traits of management in different and i guess they say there's no one way to uh, become successful like even and i came from the airport here google was would show different ways at different points of time you know i told the driver google yahan se dikha raha he said no sir this road is closed temporarily so we have to go so that keeps happening so uh, let's not get bogged down by risks uh, let's take it discuss it but uh, i think so let's not overdo it true true and i think that's the key point is it about let's not you know overdo it but let's take it and discuss it so that's all about building a risk culture so nilesh ji in your experience this risk culture building how have you seen it evolve how do ids go about doing it you know what should they do to really enhance the risk culture the kind of questions they can ask and especially any things that you've seen where you've done something and you know that has helped mitigate the risk in the future uh thanks this uh, appears to be better that is uh, slightly slow uh thanks uh, dilip ji my you know experience has been different type of company something is a promoter driven company some are board managed companies where the shareholders don't have enough you know a stake i think the way risk is looked at the way risk is you know sort of uh, uh, considered and implemented I, i'll just share, share some experiences with you first taking a point from uh, sanjay ji in a promoter driven company the way they are running the way you look at uh, things so just one experience i want a board of a non banking finance company they ventured into 
commercial vehicle fund. They were originally to gold loan. They started a new business on uh, commercial vehicle finance. And as independent, what was our role? We have got some bankers with us. I'm a chartered accountant, uh, so on and so forth, the different skill sets. So first we did when a new business is coming up, we had initially a very high level NPS in the commercial because a different line of business from gold loans. So we issued a credit audit just to see whether the process is all right, put the systems and processes in place so that the, the NPAs, etc. are low. And it achieved success. The fact that that was installed, the credit audit of some experienced people uh, and the processes were set, the NPA levels went down. After maybe a couple of years, when we were again looking at one of the quarterly results, we suddenly saw that the NPA spiked in that business after being you know, sort of profitable for a few uh, couple of years. And just one innocuous question to the uh, promoters that why don't we look at more in detail the viability of this business with this level of NPA after stabilizing the systems and processes. Uh, why is it, you know, the NPA is say 5%, 7% in that particular line of business? And uh, the promoter was smarter than the independent directors, I can say. Before the next quarter, that particular business sold out. It was a 2000 crore book. It was sold out for 2100 crore to somebody who could manage it better. See, finally, it is again the skill sets with an organization where they get a proper skill set to manage the risk, the NPA risk in this particular case. So that was one particular, uh, you know, example of a promoter driven where the independent directors escalated a risk and how it was mitigated by the promoters. Great. Another risk in a shareholder driven uh, where there are no promoters. It's, you know, each shareholder is less than 5%, a board driven company. I joined a private sector bank when nobody was a promoter. First audit committee, I get, a, you know, agenda which shows 55,000 audit comments pending. You know, in banks, there are different types of audits. So what did it, you know, sort of trigger in me as an independent director? Though it was private sector, but since it was board driven, public sector type attitude, etc. So this was a risk which I found that if this continues, the bank is surely going to go down. So for me, one option was I cop out. Easiest thing is to, but that time I was maybe uh, 12 years younger. And I said, let's uh, take a challenge whether we can turn around this type of an organization. And just request it, call the audit uh, head. I said, newer audits will keep on happening quarter on quarter, but I want a reduction of 5,000 comments each quarter. Net, net. Today is 55,000 new comments adding up, but net it has to be. Uh, you know, getting this was somewhere in July uh, 11. My term got over in June of 19. Eight years term is in a private sector bank. When I joined the board, there were some 900 branches. When I left the uh, board, it was over 1200 branches. The audit comments from 55,000, which were there at, in June 11 or July 11, went down to 3000. The idea was there's a risk arising, which you can see from the type of culture, which is there. It's a mm -hmm. culture in the bank. Yeah. Hai. How do you change that culture? Okay. You are in business. You will make mistakes. Please correct the mistakes and go ahead. True. If there's malafide, which is rare. Malafide will be looked at differently. If somebody is you know, doing mischief at the employee level, that will be, which is negligible. But 99% of the comments are business comments. You do business, you make mistakes, but correct it and move ahead. That was the whole idea. So that culture change came in. So I'm saying one is promoter driven. One is, there is no promoter. It is your own professional management. You know, how we look at uh, things. So that's why I wanted to share the example. So, you know, different perspectives, how the risk is identified, and mitigated. And more I think key point in terms of how independent directors raise and escalate the risk and that's how they kind of build the culture. You shared some great examples on you know what are some good success stories and maybe Sanjay ji and you as well uh, Nilesh ji. Any examples where you realize that you know this was an issue, this was a risk, maybe not you but in the industry the wider examples and the risk was there, it was ignored and then down the line people suffered because of it. I'll go first over here. Again, not my personal experience, but hindsight experience of what uh, failures we have seen. Starting with Satyam, five to 7,000 crore bank balance in 2009, current account. I think that was waiting to be, you know, so none of, we had the most esteemed board over there, but nobody questioned why is it lying in a current account, not even a fixed deposit. So I think, again, this is hindsight experience. I could have made the same mistake. I'm not blaming anybody. Second, let's look at uh, ILFS, the debt equity ratio and the failure of the equity raise, the promoters, I think LIC and some Japanese 
entity they were supposed to be raising so these were you know waiting to explore the debt equity issue completely you know out of whack of uh, any normal this thing so maybe i'm saying hindsight it is wiser but when you look at other people's experience this is learning for us as independent directors when these ratios and these type of balances are going out of you need to be focusing on that you need to questioning on that so that's one i think which just came to the mind i'll narrate a small incident many years back in our company uh typically an entrepreneur is always so much involved you know he he's set in his own world and he starts thinking in a pattern so an independent director comes and very harmless questions very simple questions as he said you know he uh, made someone divest a commercial vehicles business you know so uh, it wasn't that the independent as an independent director he took the decision or he to told him but he flagged off an issue which started a chain of reactions so simple thing like are we looking at peer companies comparisons you know have we done an analysis you know we are justifying okay we haven't done so well this quarter the environment wasn't good fair enough so as an independent director asked us ki uh, can we see the peer comparisons have you got a real peer comparison so we said we don't have a one to one peer thing so how to analyze he said at least let's do it and try to come up with some conclusion so that sort of analysis gave some very important insights you know uh, they weren't answers but they were insights and they raised questions and i think so a very important role which an id always does is to flag issues and raise questions they are not going to give solutions so if anyone feels an independent actor is going to give you a solution because you have him he because he doesn't know the business better than the management he is not supposed to know but he definitely can sense things with his experience and i would tell any i don't know how many company people are here uh, we normally shun away from appointing good independent directors people who can sense things and we have always seen when we hire uh, or oh, sorry not hire so wrong appoint such independent directors i have seen myself uh, i'll name him he is no more we had uh, Ms., uh, dr vr mehta who was a padma shri on our board for many years and he made a 360 degree change in our corporate governance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no confrontation no not saying that you're wrong but just by pointing out small things point by point point by point i think so our corporate governance has gone up multiple times just because of those small inputs those small questions and sometimes you may not agree but you think ye wo bol rahe hain he is asking for something so let's do it but there's always a reason or cause behind that asking you know we would never many years back we didn't have a budget so if for that at least let's make a budget even if it fails no issues but let's make it there's so many such small small things and that uh, slowly creates a risk culture you know True. we may not always give that word that we are creating a risk culture but uh, no knowingly unknowingly by putting things in place by raising flags by having a risk management policy by discussing it year on year what went wrong how are you mitigating things you are slowly creating a culture it is on the board i feel uh, the management to go more deep use that uh, sort of experience that insights that sixth sense of independent directors by giving them more time having maybe a separate session in our company our independent director insists ki once a year let's have a non agenda session you know no agenda as such let it be an open session where we are discussing what our strategy they they'll keep asking questions yeah. and we will keep answering or start thinking about them it doesn't have to be everything everything doesn't have to be structured but let's take advantage and those independent directors with that session understand our business is better which contributes to the agenda the result meetings etc etc fantastic sure sure nilesh ji just to emphasize the point which sanjay made earlier today unfortunately i think most of our quarterly meetings etc completely driven by compliance and agenda i would say 80 90% and hardly we focus on strategy hr marketing i think different aspects which can grow the company and for which a separate sessions are required so now in some of the companies we have off site meetings maybe once in a year twice in a year where the strategy is discussed three year five year or somewhere we call each and every business in each board meeting one business is supposing the number of businesses so i think that is absolutely essential only then of course one knows more about the company and just adding uh, even the audit programs which are there which are present in the audit committee uh, a lot of good inputs from the id helps in having you know throwing out the right points he doesn't say you're wrong or right by but by making you look at those areas 
the auditor comes and says that look i think so there's a problem here he sends something but he never said anything so uh, we, you should not the management should never feel that an id is actually trying to point out mistakes or confront you i think so that's a very wrong mindset which sometimes creeps mm -hmm. in when he starts asking a lot of questions so i think so it should come slow and steady like the audit notes came down from 55 he didn't say bring it down to 5000 he said bring it down 5000 so that gets accepted if you say 5000 they say this guy is useless let's get him out as fast as possible <laughs> uh just to add i think uh, especially those who are the chartered account fraternity or whatever uh my focus has been whenever any audit issues come up the internal audit issues focus on a holistic patch up uh, of the things not a thigda pachi jo bolte hai just the point i usko resolve kar diya i think underlying uh, what is the change in system processes it which is required if that focus is there the company is going to do very well you are making the company you know foundationally very strong just if this issue came you resolve that issue is only the i would say top of the surface you need to go into more detail go into the bottom and fix the system and processes there's a focus which that lens has to come up from the independent directors so in fact our independent directors very clearly tell our internal auditors don't fill pages for the sake of it you know if if it's uh, you found 200 rupees mistake you've corrected it a gate pass entry was there it's finished if you want get a tell us what system failures happened if you really think it's a system failure which can lead to multiple a chain of such thing a one off situation you are highlighting as if it's a big point they don't waste our time they they very category tell the independent audit we don't want pages great great so i think as we are wrapping up in some time one key thing that was brought about really was about talking and communicating i think that's really key in terms of building a risk culture and like you also suggested you know you get into an offside you call a business you you communicate so the communication is key in terms of building the culture have you seen any initiatives where you know the leadership or the board has taken pains to communicate their risk culture or the appetite or you know how they are doing business to the wider organization not just within the board any any thoughts on that uh yeah i think uh, one of the companies where i am is in the uh, mutual fund uh, business and there uh, i think morning somebody commented uh, circulars coming morning and evening <laughs> i think pramod bhai who was yeah, yeah, there yeah. so that is true in that particular industry currently i think it's an overdrive the regulatory overdrive and there i think risk is the key focus and it is being driven down right to the bottom level the, the challenge is the person who is at the trading desk there are challenges there could be front running etc so that right you know across from top to bottom that uh, you know the the risk has to be ingrained true, what type true. of risk could be and how it has to be mitigated right at the bottom level it's not just at the top board of directors level or the ceo level or the no. true true and i think that's where again the id comes in in terms of he escalating it to the board highlighting it and then how the board is going to really implement and percolate it downwards that's another thing that can be tracked and measured on how the how ids can really influence uh, you know building of a risk culture any any final Just, thoughts sanjay uh, ji before we open on, to the audience uh, regarding uh, percolating it down the organization yeah. i think so a very important thing which needs to be understood in that is uh, everyone understands things in a different perspective so uh, if you're going to create too much of risk word down the line you know you're going to actually scare them off so it's more important how you mitigate risk you create a risk culture but the word risk doesn't necessarily we have to use everywhere the risk risk and risk we are doing business risk is there we all know problems are also going to come you make processes and systems which are uh, directly and indirectly taking care of it right. rather than getting it because many times uh, let's call everyone and let's have a, a lecture on it you know but uh, that really doesn't work we need to understand and communicate differently to different people taking care that finally the goal and objectives are met without tying the hands of an entrepreneur or the management or the staff without uh, tying them up to the sense that they stop thinking and True. they become True. just animals uh, or creatures working in the system because we all know in today's volatility world you have to have a mind of your own you need to be there and uh, sh uh, troubleshoot as and when it comes true true and i think further to that i think the key element is also okay risk is going to be there how am i dealing with it how is it being made transparent how am i escalating it i think those are the key things that id should work on in terms of building a culture of being open to risk okay the risk is there but it's being communicated it's being transparently told that this is what we are getting into this is what has happened 
like you gave the 200 rupee example okay it's happened it's happened that's fine but it's important to be communicating all of that so i think that's uh, an angle in terms of how ids can really uh, build you know a, a culture of risk and how they can influence that uh, any any final thoughts final before we thoughts, open up uh, currently i think there are two risks which are in my perspective as a director that all of us should be aware one is of course cyber security which i believe most of the boards are focused on and i think not only the boards even the government and i think uh, in your companies wherever you are i hope enough and more is being done on cyber security uh, because that's a huge threat uh, which government is also seized of and as come to one second i think where the uh, i would say risk is there but enough work is not happening in my you know uh, it's a perception i may be wrong maybe degree wise different companies may be different is on the succession planning i think what happens is i am a ceo i am the promoter i think you know it is all told so but succession planning uh, filling the boxes who is going to be the options available what are the sk uh, gap skill gaps which is required to be done etc etc the whole the, that work i think needs more focus uh, it is there on the discussion table right now it is being addressed but i think again it is not being looked at holistically it is just a uh, i would say just something to do and there's one more thing on uh, spreading the risk down at the bottom is you know person uh, just to narrate an example not on the risk perspective all of you have heard of uh, rakesh jindal's investment in titan how many of you are aware of the origin of that why did he invest in titan any reason his uh, partner uh, utpal shet was visiting titan for the first time and he was in the shop floor somewhere he was talking to the uh, the blue collared worker there you know something and that person the worker was aware how his work is Im impacting the profitability of the company titan at that ground level normally when you see at the shop floor of the workers they are just busy with their machine whatever they are doing is they are not aware of the total what is the contribution of that particular work to the overall profitability so the moment he realized that he's talking to a worker is so educated and is so you know at the level where he knows what his work is impacting the uh, final profitability of the company he called up rakesh utpal called up rakesh this is a company we have to invest in and the rest is history as i told you when currently i think that is one of the major portfolio of his, yeah. which is publicly yeah. the reason i'm saying something is publicly available but the background to hit is this uh, just a small uh, thing which we effectively use uh, we use the names of our independent directors to drive home the message at the lower levels you know so i told in today's board meeting we got fired they were very upset they were saying this what's happening is not correct there is lot of pressure so just before a board meeting everyone is really rushing up to get everything in order you know so that you know th there's no comments so you know it's it's not just about what they say it's about uh, what they can possibly do so we, uh, it's a very effective tool and have some uh, it's done wonders because they are they are really really uh, bored hearing us whole day and night saying the same things again and again so uh, all the i use the same thing sorry i just had uh, in the companies where i am not only the Uh, people down the line, uh, whether it is the promoters, whether the CFO, as if CFO has got some issue, I say fire from our shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> our shoulders are there to fire from. <laughs> true, true. So all the aspiring independent directors, be prepared to you know be labelled like this. आपके नाम पे बिल फटने वाला है.